Hello. Hello. To this shit Hello. happened. This week we are doing <laughs> creativity shit happened. I'm Danielle. I'm Lauren. And today we have our guest, Denise. Also known Hello. as DL Finn. <laughs> or your mother. What? My mother? <laughs> yeah. She is. She's my mother. Surprise, you didn't well, know. Welcome to this. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start us off with our fun facts. Um, so because we're doing creativity, we're being super creative and doing creativity facts. My first one is 72% of people have creative insights in the shower. Huh. Very true. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> I'm going to read what it says about it because it makes me laugh it's not just a cliche standing naked be beneath a steam of hot water and letting your mind wander is good for your creativity <laughs> <laughs> that's what we yeah. all do <laughs> um the introverts are on to something solitude is where creativity thrives so we should be having lots of new creative inventions during this whole quarantine we'll see. yeah See what comes out of this. Uh, trying new things makes you more creative. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Yeah. Trust your intuition. That's how LSD was discovered. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> the story of how chemist Albert Hoffman discovered LSD and then famously embarked on the world's first acid trip is well known among those interested in medicine and psychedelic culture. But what's less widely known is one detail. Hoffman had synthesized LSD-25, one of several chemical combinations he had created, a full five years before he decided to go back and synthesize it again and continue to experiment with it. Why? He just had a hunch. <laughs> so LSD, you know. This might be fun. <laughs> uh, trauma has hidden creative properties. So a lot of our body's way of dealing with trauma actually creates creativity outlets for us. Um, so a lot of the people who are very creative often have suffered a trauma. And daydreaming is surprisingly good for your brain. So if you just see me zoning out right. in the middle of the podcast. I, I won't tell Munchkin to stop daydreaming then. There you go. And then my last one that I'll do is some of the best ideas are widely ridiculed before they're revered. So don't give yeah. up, bitches. Right. And that's, <laughs> that's my fun facts. All right. So I started doing my on this day search, which is May 23rd. Woo! But I did it with keeping with our creativity theme. So in 1785, on May 23rd, Benjamin Franklin announced the invention of bifocals because he was creative. <laughs> hella creative. Uh, hella, yeah. Uh, 1922, Walt Disney incorporated his first film company, oh. which was called Laughogram Films. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Adorable. <laughs> <laughs> 1966, May 23rd, Beatles released Paperback Writer. Oh, Paperback right. Writer. Am I allowed to sing that? Right. Are we going to get sued now? Um, I don't know. Change a few of the words because then it's covered under parody law. <laughs> ba -be -da -do -do. Just makes sense. <laughs> it works. In 1969, BBC ordered 13 episodes of Monty Python's Flying Circus. Yes. Mm -hmm. 1980, The Shining was released, the film version obviously right and then 1984 indiana jones and the temple of doom was opened in the u.s See, it's right around my birthday that's why i have to love it mm -hmm. uh may 23rd 2000 eminem released his third studio album the marshall mathers lp which was the fastest ever selling studio album damn and it won a uh, grammy 2001 for best rap album yeah. So lots of creative things happen in late May. <laughs> I like it. And we know lots of those people have trauma. 
We're all traumatic people. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so creativity. Um, this topic was one that we brought up actually a while ago and a lot of it is the focus. <laughs> I'm sorry, Paul just tripped over <laughs> things in here. It's fine. Um, so we wanted to focus on what we get our creativity from. What do we do when we feel like we're creativity? Creativity is stuck. Um, where do we get our inspiration from for our creativity? Fun things like that. And since my mother is a published author, <laughs> oh. she how much do we have to pay for this interview? Shh, we don't talk about that. Um, so yeah, we brought her here uh, to give some insight on that stuff because um, we all have our lovely create creativity outlets and all that fun stuff. So Denise. <laughs> Tell us, tell us how you've been feeling during this quarantine and your creativity and how it's been hindered or how you found new ways to be creative. I found it very hindering. I have not been creative at all. <laughs> go take a shower. So I go outside. <laughs> I have to go in nature and the only thing I've been able to do is write poetry. So you start Everything small. I am starting small. Yeah, I mean that's good though, right? That's I, you know. I feel, <laughs> I feel most writers are having problems writing at this particular yeah. juncture, and a lot of people even aren't reading, which doesn't make sense to me. But right, huh? Yeah, I I feel like that has been like even if I try to start reading something, my brain's just like, we don't care about this fictional world right now. Oh. Like, there's something yeah. about it where our own world is so like a fictional Fictional. story that <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's become overwhelmingly overwhelming to create this other fiction. Um, but yeah, I agree that nature is probably one of the best things. Like going out there and realizing that there is so much life that isn't being affected. But I mean, it's actually, you know, nature's been able to improve during this. Um, oh, it's, it's having a great time without it. <laughs> yeah, Mother Nature's like, get the fuck back inside. Here's some hornets. <laughs> back in the oh, house. Here's a tornado. Oh, no. Here's a torrential downpour. Like, and the earthquake in Nevada last week or whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. six point something earthquake. Right. So it was a 6.3 in Tonopah. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've, I've been there. I was Yeah. I My was mom there. hates Tonopah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Aw. Oh. Yeah, I went there with Paul a few years back. We've driven through there on our way to Vegas. And I she got, got a speeding ticket. Uh, oh, that's where she got her speeding <laughs> ticket? Yes. <laughs> that's amazing. Because uh, it's so that dumb little town where you have to suddenly drive 25 miles an hour after you've been doing 70 for hours. Yeah. And you're like, where am I? Yep. Um, but yeah, nature is a good place to start. I have found that trying to kind of riff off of other things that I know instead of trying to create my own has been more helpful. So like setting a prompt or going to, I go to hit record a lot, um, which is a platform created by Joseph Gordon-Levitt for artists to come together and they create prompts every week of like different things you can do voice recording videos drawing painting all these fun things um so i try to do the writing ones and it's very open um they'll give you a prompt and you can do a story however you want you can write poetry you can just write two sentences you can write three words like they don't care um and it's you know it's very supportive and i find that being able to find people who can still tap into their creativity during this helped me to get back into being creative because um, I feel like this took away you know I was supposed to be doing a bunch of dance shows and the quarantine mm -hmm. took those away from me so then it was like well I'm not gonna dance so screw you I'm just gonna sit and be a bump on a log um, and it kind of stole my joy <laughs> <laughs> It did That's steal terrible. a lot of joy from people. It did. 
I don't know. It's just been like even watching TV shows was like it was difficult to care. Well, because everything's so negative, so it's hard to have feelings about anything at this particular point. Yeah. We're just ready to do battle over every single thing we do. Yeah. Ugh, that's exhausting. Yeah. It is. <laughs> and they're so determined to get their opinions across, and you're like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> um, go educate yourself <laughs> properly. Um, oh. Don't even and get it in it about education. Oh, good it concerns God. me. Yeah, our our lives and stuff. That's why we need to just go color. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Coloring. My creativity has been stunted for years now. <laughs> oh, no. I, so I haven't done anything except for like fringe creativity. Like I'll color. Like you make the picture, I'll color it in. Right. That's fun for me. Because I don't have to try too hard. Yeah, but that's, again, that's little things. So you're starting with yeah. your template is what somebody else drew. Mm -hmm. And then you get to fill it in with your own creative juices. And then when you're annoyed and you're like, I don't want to keep thinking about what color to put here, then you can stop. Then I go do a puzzle. Right. Because I think puzzles are creative, but I don't think they're necessarily recognized as creative. But they're... You know, They're spatial healing. reasoning and, and logical thinking, like games, kind of, which are my favorite types of games. Hey, look, a puzzle piece. <laughs> 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 I know, I'm still working on that Harry Potter puzzle that's that taking hard. forever. It's it, all blue. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> it is, especially when cats come up on steel pieces. Oh, um, I don't have that problem. I know. But yeah, no, I think puzzles are very creative um mm -hmm. i mean not and apparently only, they're healing too they are healing. yeah but like they're you have to people with traumatic experiences see they're yeah. more back to these traumas which but causes like, creativity so wait, yeah you're just you're well, calming use that in the therapy, trauma. so there you go that's why i like yeah. puzzles so much because i've created my own traumas in my life just by being creative i don't know i'm a weird person um but yeah no i feel like puzzles like you have to use your imagination to try and finish what's not there like you're trying mm -hmm. to put the image into these pieces um, it's being able to pick up on the tiny details in yeah the very small pieces of puzzle you can figure out where that fits in the bigger picture mm -hmm. So it's getting your brain to think abstractly. Yeah. And, you know, I think that that type of thinking can apply to things like writing or drawing, you know, mm -hmm. you're starting with these little pieces that maybe you don't know what they're going to create. And then you put them together and maybe it creates a cool picture or maybe your puzzle is all fucked up and you're like, wow, I got to move these pieces. <laughs> or maybe you have five puzzles blended together. I don't know. Um, right. But you know maybe that's good maybe that's fun i've actually thought about doing that <laughs> just blending different puzzles to these pieces oh. bit here yeah i'm a psychopath today it's okay that's, that's I think fine that's what we're doing with our lives right now anyways is blending all the pieces of the puzzles together mm. yeah i like, like it, it. <laughs> we like <laughs> that we like it <laughs> we're trying to like. figure it out that's why we're all quiet <laughs> Ah, I like that. Oh, yeah. my camera's over there. <laughs> I know. I'm like, where am I? Um, and then where's my camera's? My, thumb? Like, my camera's off center. I'm holding my thumb up, but it's no. Oh, there it is. Look at this. Is it? These poor people that just listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> they hate us. They stopped listening. <laughs> They're like these motherfuckers. Um, yeah. Oh. I mean, these are awesome things. What are there other things? So, like Lauren, I know you've said that you feel like your creativity has been stunted for a couple of years what part of your creativity that you used to have do you want to bring back like what do you feel like is missing where you feel like I it's stunted to, i used to really enjoy writing like way back in high school college and then ever since i stopped being in an educational setting i just haven't had the attention span for it, I guess. I don't know. 
I tried writing once like a couple weeks ago or no, it was probably months ago because I think it was before the world went crazy. Like it's all blending together. Yeah. Um but even then I was trying to write a story that I started writing in high school and never finished. And then I lost all my notes for it. Yeah. Because that was, I don't know, twenty computers ago. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, Weird. Right. So I haven't done any of that. And, you know, I used to dance too. And I, I don't know. I just haven't taken the time to do any of it. I haven't wanted to take the time. Yeah. But like, like, that's what I mean. Like, I haven't wanted to pursue my own creativity. That's like an, in a more active manner. So I've been doing the things that are creative, but they don't require me to come up with anything. Mm. It's more just like, training (laughs) i'm training so that i can be creative for myself later yes i mean you're just you're gaining tools i'm in training boot camp i do puzzles and i color coloring books (laughs) i've been in that boot camp lauren yeah i like it i just started later right yeah i mean it's never too late to you know get into whatever you want to do and Mm -hmm. i mean i've seen your writing I know you can write. We're a bunch of writers in this podcast today. Woo. I'm still working on Woo. being an aspiring writer. I'll just keep starting new things and then never finish them. You're not aspiring anymore. You finished. No, not yet. It needs to be. Get you no, because I haven't finished my part of that <laughs> editing it. That's just editing, though. It's hard. Well, yeah. Well, it's it was the worst part. I already <laughs> am like, should I change all of these things? No, stop it, Danielle. Well, I'm pretty sure I made it like a third of the way through it and then the world exploded yeah it did and so i have not that's my bad i'm sorry i haven't worked on that since i don't i got locked in the house you're (laughs) completely fine like i don't i can't it's funny because like i've noticed that i'll start writing something and like it's really easy in the beginning like Mm -hmm. everything and then when it gets to the point where it all has to start coming together and like mm. the middle, this high plot point, and then I'm like, yep. I, the middle, the middle's worst. It's the worst. Yeah. Part of the book. yeah. And I'm like, I don't think about what I'm writing ahead of time. Like, I just let it flow. So if it's not flowing, I'm like, well, fuck that. And <laughs> so then it never gets finished. Like, I've started two other books aside from the one that is in editing mode. And one of them is book two of book one in edit mode. And then another one is some murder mystery that is not even the same. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, you know, like these, these characters, I feel like I use them to help me get through things. Um, mm. So I'm like trying to create situations that are interesting, but also help me. Like it has become my therapy, but sometimes doing my own therapy makes me not want to do it because then I'm focusing on myself. Mm-hmm. And but you're doing it for a character, so it's not as intimidating as doing it yourself. Yeah. I mean, it, my stories always mirror what's going on around me. You just got to look a little closely. Right. No. Oh, I don't have to look closely at all, Mother. I know. A little possessed evil to all people. Sure. <laughs> I wonder what that is. <laughs> what are those? Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's interesting. So let's... I'm gonna, I'm going to circle around to the fact that you write poetry while you're on the back of a motorcycle. That is one of my proud facts. <laughs> like I know You've that. You've actually seen me, I believe, haven't you? Yes, I have. <laughs> but the I people don't know. I got it. My, I have not dropped a pin. I am very proud of myself. <laughs> I got a yeah. little journal in my pocket and a pin and an extra pin just in case. Yeah, and then she but writes on the I'm back. Like, and I use your dad as a, my, my table, and I write, and I just, whatever I see, like, I'll look at a, a hill and think emerald green, and it just goes from there, you know, and it hmm. ends up being, oh, yeah, it's a lovely green, and it's, about, you know, how I'm feeling at the time. It's, it's pretty cool. And, I mean, if you couldn't ask for more stimulus than being a back of a Harley and everything flowing around you, it's like yeah. the perfect place. I mean, everything's coming at you, and you can, it's just, it's an amazing place. You need to try it sometime. Well, for me, I don't, I'm not inspired by the things that I see. I'm just inspired by 
the lack of distractions of people. Like when I go in nature, it inspires me to open myself up to write, but it, I don't want to write about what I'm seeing. Like I'll, what? For me, it's what I see is what I'm feeling. I just tell you what I'm seeing, but you're getting what I'm feeling through what I'm seeing. It's, it's kind of a double process. You may think I'm writing about a lovely waterfall, but that is only part of it. It's my feelings are becoming the waterfall, you know, towering down to the bottom. It's, it's a whole process. But anyways, yeah, so that's, it's, it's very complicated. Yeah, your sound is all funky, but the listeners yeah. will just have to deal with that. Yep. Is it okay now? Because it just vibrated once, but I think it's fine now. I don't know. You sound funny. Mute yourself and unmute yourself. <laughs> Alrighty. How's that? Nah, you still sound tinny. That's alright. Yeah. That's what you are now. It's literally on a, a tin can. Oh my god. Try. I think okay, it's. Oh yeah. Oh. Now, now you sound normal again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because it was literally sitting on top of a metal can. <laughs> Where's the <laughs> hole that I got you? <laughs> it's way over there, and I'd have to go get it. I think it's just your internet. Anyway, yeah. but, so that's, you know, that's cool. I don't, I don't, I get inspired by just nature and its healing properties, but I don't, like my mind will create stories that are completely unrelated to anything around me. Mm -hmm. Like when I first started writing my book, it was, everybody was asleep and I was in a rental for the 4th of July with Paul's family and the silence after the chaotic of we have to go 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 do all these things blah, 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 all day long having that quiet made me go to this different place and I think that's what nature does it it, it brings me somewhere where all of a sudden things have slowed down so that my brain can start to create these worlds um, your soul awakens yeah I like that my soul awakens mm. yeah so it's just it, it, um, it inspires me in a different way but you it's want? just those moments I look at a dragonfly and I'm just enthralled and I, I can stare at a dragonfly for lengthy periods of time which is kind of weird I know but no it's not something. no but I can kind of go it's kind of a meditative state you become go into this state it's not you it's your soul but you're in a different area that's where your frequency is yeah well I was actually just that whole time thinking about you know what you were saying about how you were writing about what you're seeing but what you're actually also writing about is what you're feeling and I was actually just kind of thinking about the way like when you go to something like the Grand Canyon and it's just something to see but it's this weird combination experience of like you look at it and it just makes you feel all of these things mm. about you know your position in the world and how big the world actually is or whatever you know it things we see trigger feelings so it makes sense that when you write about what you're seeing it's more than just a visual being explained it's it's you know the whole part of your emotion coming out and what that, you know, waterfall would make you feel or, you know, because I'm just, just thinking like sometimes you see something in nature that's so beautiful that just you kind of want to just like, you get overwhelmed. Yeah. Like you just want to cry because it's so beautiful or so, you know, tragic or whatever it is. So it really makes sense that, you know, writing about a visual is actually writing about the feelings. And yeah. so that's why the Harley is so stimulating because I'm just getting so much in different directions. On top yeah, of the makes... fact that you have cars coming at you and you could die at any moment. So it's, it's kind of... <laughs> yeah. I'm going to die, but look how pretty it. nature is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I die, can it be next to that tree? It's pretty. <laughs> can I fall in the water too while we're at it? Uh, <laughs> I'll just tell up to it. <laughs> Drink some water, Lauren. Oh. Um, yeah, I really like that. I like that the fact that nature is stimulating 
our emotions so much mm-hmm. that it creates an outlet of creativity for us. Um, so maybe in that same, you know, along that same train of thought, you know, we're stuck inside now, so we don't have access to that stimulus, but being trapped inside like this is a whole different set of emotions. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we just need to figure out how to use those. Yeah. I like it. It's like the chaos has become within us rather than around us. Mm-hmm. And so we don't understand how to direct it into our creative outlet. Um, I think we're going to get a lot of interesting media out of this. Yeah, I really hope so. Like, I mean, even just, I'm sure there's going to be lots of just like people screaming into a camera like, and that'll become like the next phase of metal or something. Mm, It's (laughs) avant-garde. So (laughs) avant-garde. I don't know if I want to scream into the camera, though. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. You don't have to. I mean, okay. I might just I cry into the camera. That's acceptable. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the other things I've been doing is going on Spotify and mm-hmm. finding, like, just going to random radio channels, whatever they're, I don't know what they're called. Uh, I don't Spotify well. Um, That's okay. And, and I forgive you. Know, you. <laughs> you know, picking one artist that I really enjoy and letting it pull in everybody else. So like okay. similar, one, similar ones, because um, if you pick an artist and you say, L- listen to their radio, yep, it'll do like artists. Um, so I actually started doing that with Ludovico and Audi and it came up with this one artist and there was one song that kept coming up and every time it would play, I would just feel calm like Mm -hmm. it would bring all of my emotions to a stillness to a center um and so I just spent one day just listening to it on repeat for like four hours and you know it was like background music while I was working and then every once in a while I would hear it and be like oh that's nice (laughs) away from it and then I go back into it and I did that for a couple of days and then I was like I really want to create movement to this like it Mm -hmm it's calling to me to bring this out in a physical form. Uh, And it was actually really cathartic and it was nice to have that release that was created from this outline. You know, that was my template was the music and it took a while for me to understand what it wanted me to give to it. But when I got there, it was like, Oh, okay. And then I didn't feel like I have to listen to this every second of every day anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, Dante. (laughs) he can't hear you i know that's why i'm whispering by his ear but yeah he's just using me to look out the window that's rude you know it was a it was interesting to let it follow through because i feel like Mm -hmm. i do songs a lot where it's just like i listen to it on repeat and repeat and repeat and then it just stops there but because Mm -hmm. we're in this quarantine i didn't have that release of what i needed so yeah, I created it through what something had spoke to me. Well, so in its own way, then listening to these, you know, songs and, and discovering new things, that's your boot camp. Yeah. You know, you're, you're absorbing other people's creativity to help kickstart your own. I like it. Look at us boot camping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think this has made us learn how to create our, we had to, we're forced to create our own. Now, take care of ourselves in ways that we've never had to because we've always remained so busy. Now we're mm-hmm. forced to create it for ourselves and it's a whole different aspect to learn. I mean, it's not the same thing anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're not being stimulated to, oh yeah, we can do this and this and this and this. No, we have to do it for ourselves. Yeah. I'm really interested to see what kind of like theater works and dance works come from this, you know, because we're, I see a lot of these professional companies who are now having these virtual performances, like, you're going to dance this part, you're going to dance this part, we're all going to join together on a Zoom, and we're going to do it. And it's beautiful, and I love it. And like, it's so of the times, Mm -hmm. Um, like, it's bringing these old works that 
have kind of gotten lost because people don't appreciate the theater as much as they should. And it's bringing it into a platform that is more accessible to a lot of people. So I feel like art is also now being seen more in a different way. And I hope that that kind of circles around to bring it back so that people go into the theater and watch it live and can experience that and feel that emotion that it brings. And I don't yeah. know. On the one hand, I, yes. You what? On the other hand, I don't want to fight for tickets with people. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> what you say, mother? I said, I definitely miss it. I've been thinking about theater and dance more often because I'm not able to see it. Yeah. Like when we went to Hamilton, I've been thinking about that a lot. I would like to be able to see that. Right. This particular uh -huh. point. Right. We were lucky to do quite a few things right before all this happened. Like, oh, good thing we went to Disneyland. Oh, good thing we went to that. Like, yeah. Good thing I went to Hawaii twice last year. Like, what? <laughs> all these weird things that happened last year that were like in preparation for me. Like, it, everything I did last year made me not want to do anything this year. And the world was like, okay, don't do anything this year. Mm -hmm. It'll help you out. Yeah, it really I, did help us out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> complaining oh, i'm too busy well now i'm not busy at all <laughs> <laughs> but now i don't want to do anything yeah. that's the problem now that life is coming back it's like what do i want again right i don't want to go back to how it was I'm no that yeah this is going to be very interesting the change we're all going to have to make in ourselves going back or just going back to the craziness one of the two it'll be a different normal it'll be a different crazy <laughs> i think yeah um it's but i think crazy. it is it is also really interesting i'm enjoying watching people and companies and organizations whatever problem solve how to deal with a new approach to doing stuff which is its own sort of creative project yeah like we got a They're notification really we got a notification from our daughter's school that next year they're they've already instituted like the option for kids to not go back to school there will they will just continue this distance learning for parents who do not feel comfortable sending their kid back to a public environment so they're creating a hybrid curriculum already for next year um, and they're sending us out like surveys to ask what what different features of the school we would utilize if it was available if it wasn't available you know, like the after school programs and stuff, what would you actually do any of these? Would you do them if you're not sending your kid to school in person? It's interesting to see, but she's definitely going back because she can't handle not being around people. <laughs> <laughs> Poor extroverts. I, have, uh, I don't think she's an extrovert. I think she's just, I don't know if it's her age or what, but she doesn't function when she's alone. Like the way she normally used to like that's a huge difference in her personality and her emotions since you know it's been two months since she's seen a friend her, her own age right <laughs> which is horribly depressing to think about yeah for a six-year-old <laughs> but nothing has changed right <laughs> nope nothing's changed <laughs> don't mind my pettiness i'm okay that's all right <laughs> we can all I think we're at a point where we're allowed to be a little bit petty. All right, cool. Even a bit, even a bit sarcastic if we'd like. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got that one down. Mm -hmm. And speaking yeah. of petty, I didn't bring this up in the uh on this day because I didn't really care. But it doesn't matter. Some one of the years on this day, uh Tom Petty fell for chapter eleven. Oh. I saw that when I was scrolling through and I was like, Oh, that sucks. And then I just kept scrolling. So. I mean, even look how famous he is was like i think people still know him struggles i mean just because he's no longer with although us. the other day my mom asked me she mentioned jim morris and then she's like oh you wouldn't know who he is and i just stared at her what? i was like excuse me i don't know who jim morrison is rude i'm offended yeah. for you yeah <laughs> she's like, he's before your time yeah so was aerosmith i know who they are right <laughs> elvis was before my time you know who else cool. was? Mozart. What? Heard of that dude. Wow. How about Beethoven. <laughs> I don't know who Albert Einstein is. He was before my time. <laughs> I love you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> How 
how dare you? <laughs> I was like, no, she listens. <laughs> she better uh, listen. Yeah. That's what she gets for telling you things, though. <laughs> you exist in my life, you will be spoken about on my podcast. Pretty much. Yeah, I've noticed it's that. It's our disclaimer. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a waiver none of you guys signed. <laughs> <laughs> You are part of my life. You are in podcast. <laughs> yep. I really like all these conversations, though. Like, it is, I feel the quarantine has forced companies to actually become creative. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's teaching the new generations and the existing generations different ways of seeing things. So maybe this will actually end up creating a huge spike in creativity. It's a huge um you know opportunity for critical thinking problem solving yeah which you need to be creative to do right because i think there's a issue a lot of people think oh i'm not creative because they don't draw they don't write they don't you know do one of the quote-unquote arts Nella. yeah but that doesn't mean that they lack creativity because just being able to you know abstractly solve problems mm -hmm. and think outside the box and find workarounds to stuff that's all some level of creativity yeah and i feel like that has been lost um when the whole no child left behind was started <laughs> we lost that yeah and now this is forcing pe it's forcing people to have to learn how to be creative learn mm -hmm. how to think critically use your analytical skills like if you're just sitting at home like you know in the first month of the quarantine people were like oh i'll be fine i'm just gonna keep doing things the way i would it'll be fine and i feel like when we entered month two it started to shift people started to realize oh this is new things this is how life is now and if i don't change then i'm going to not actually be living it and so it's forcing people to use these skills that they didn't realize they had um so mm -hmm. that's, you know i'm hoping that it helps the world <laughs> in a positive way and or it's some of the world i like to think <laughs> yeah. there are those yeah. still fighting this change tooth and nail yes, right because everything's fine don't worry about it nothing no changed it's for me it's like a rapid forced evolution yeah yeah we, we didn't have any you know we have to change and adapt to move forward right that's just all you know all of a sudden you know the dinosaurs couldn't get used to the cold so they died <laughs> right the universe was like no child left behind yeah watch this <laughs> try this one out if you don't adapt you get left behind <laughs> like you know it's that is the harsh of the true world oh. you know that's what it is that is mother nature that is as much as we humans try to create things to defy whatever mother nature has created that is still more powerful than us and even oh, if, we have no control over anything no. and you know even if this virus was actually created in a lab the humans have the, the way we live in the world the way that we have defied what mother nature has set out for us to do we can't any longer fight off this infection this virus this whatever because we fought so hard to not follow the rules. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> Why did we ever? <laughs> yeah, but you know, there are times when it's helpful and there are times when it's hurtful. And this is one of those times where I feel like it's both. You know, it's mm -hmm. one, hurting people and killing them. And it's also teaching us how much humanity does matter. And, you know, you have the people who are out protesting because they want a haircut. Like, why is that what's important to you? And yeah. but it is I but know. It, is actually what it is because my split ends all right because they don't want to be told what to do no matter whether it's good for them or not they don't want to yeah. be told what to do unless That's somebody it. tells them to drink bleach and then they go okay they're like rebellious teenagers I, that's the that's what i look at as a mom <laughs> that's what our society reminds me of is just really rebellious teenagers I don't understand we're that because I didn't rebel. We're doing 21 shots of alcohol on their birthday. No. I didn't do that. Just shit. to see what happens. That sounds terrible. Yeah. Right. Pretty sure on my birthday, I had one mixed drink with dinner. Yeah. That's and, then, and then I got a tattoo. 
<laughs> on my 21st. I didn't do anything on my 21st birthday. Yeah, no, I, I we had bought that. alcohol. <laughs> I don't think I even bought anything. I just ordered it with lunch or dinner or whatever. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to get a tattoo. I mean, that is technically buying it because they had to check your ID so that you could buy it. I think so. That is yeah. the exciting part of it. So, yeah. you know, there you go. I'm also not really a huge drinker, so right. I never was that super into it. So that's not yeah. something that you really want. Hey, Kitty. Sue, what's going on? <laughs> Look at that gut. Um, <laughs> Drive yeah. by. I mean, she's just healthy. That's another thing, you know, maybe we should all take LSD and see how creative we get. Oh, geez. <laughs> no, I don't. I do not recommend that. Unless, you know, you want to, then you do that. that sounds I'm too creative to take it. That has always been my problem. And we will leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> she will create monsters that are frightening. <laughs> see, that that is where my mind goes. When I write scary. right now, it's... It's I, I kill everybody and I'm like, well, we, we, maybe I can't be writing right now. <laughs> <laughs> no one is safe. Yeah, just well, that's right my it. quarantine problem. Everybody has to die in my stories. I'm like, maybe I should stop, just back off a little bit right now. Just maybe write because you're lonely. Stories. You're, oh. That is my short stories. They're all going to everybody's got to die. And I'm like, no, I better Well, wait. what's wrong with that? Right. That's the kind well, of I, stuff I would write in high school. <laughs> well, I don't mind if a few people die, but I don't want the entire story to die. Oh. I'm going to leave some hope. You just need one person. Just a flower poking out of the ground at the very end. No, I think Probably I had no hope in high school. That's why. <laughs> That's probably too. I feel it's my place to offer some hope. That is where I, that is my stand on it. All right. So that's part of your creativity is focusing on hope in your books. At some point, I have to go to a dark place and then get to the hope. I like it. Thank I just you. think we all do. You haven't read my last book, so you don't know how dark I got this time. It's because I was told I needed to wait. Okay. Okay. It's, it's almost here. I'm waiting. Okay. When's it release? The 26th. It was supposed to be the 19th for someone's birthday, but it didn't work out. Weird. Because everybody's being really slow during the quarantine about doing things. Yeah, I know. What, what book should people search by D.L. Finn on the 26th? <laughs> this is in three days? Chance. This last chance. D.L. Finn, three days from now. It might have some political stuff and it might have a serial killer. And that's all I'm going to say. Oh. And it might have an angel and an entity. <laughs> Just might. I like it. Someday Danielle will finish her current book. It's then, a good one. And then I'll announce it too. <laughs> when our <laughs> lives are not chaotic. And it's not a good time to release books. I'm not doing as well. I can, it's. We'll see. I should have waited. Lauren's helping me out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. <laughs> That's just what I'm here for. Uh huh. <laughs> I was totally my plan from the beginning, you know? Yeah, you could sense it. You heard back in January <laughs> that there was an outbreak, and you were like, I think that's going to come here. It's going to go sideways. Yeah, yeah. we can. Yeah. <laughs> Very wise, Lauren. Very wise. <laughs> I'm just ahead of my time. Oh, it's You happening. are. You know, I'm very impressed. <laughs> I realized just now, thinking about all these random things, my brain went down a rabbit hole because that's what it does. Uh-oh. Um, no, it's fine. How being in different levels of water caused different parts of my creativity to come out. Like, so if I'm looking at water, it does one thing. If I'm swimming in the water, it does something else. And then like, if I'm in a shower or something, that's totally, totally different experience. But it's all, I don't know. Floating. Floating. Yeah. How water has a way of doing too. that. It's because water has memories and it passes them on to us and it is whispering in our ears the stories that we need to tell. <laughs> that is where it comes from. You figured out the secret. It's the aliens that injected stories into the water so that we absorb it and then the people who are listening can tell it. 
And I'm waiting for this story to be finished, Danielle. Which one? The one that I'm bullshitting right now? Yeah, that's a, be a great story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting. Maybe I, water speaks to us because we're mostly water. We are. That's true. If I could figure out how to write when I'm snorkeling, I would do it. There's there's things that you could do that with. They have underwater tablets. Devices. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, too busy swimming with turtles, but I'll get back to that. Just sit under the water. It'd be fun. <laughs> be fun to write an entire book underwater. Okay. I'm going to go uh, create a pool of water and put a bunch of animals in it that I can watch swim around and sit in there. Be like, don't talk to me for three days. Yeah, you just have to get like a snorkel set or some kind of <laughs> learn how to scuba dive, which I've always wanted to do. Yeah. I just didn't want to do it off our coast because they had the class in the college up here. And I thought there is no way I'm getting into that icy water with the great whites and going, you know, it's scuba diving. Real smart. <laughs> nope. Hawaii, yes, no problem. I'll waltz right in. Uh, good lord. All right. Are there certain animals that you guys have that seem to spike your creativity? Kitties. Oh. I've never thought about that. You're welcome. <laughs> Cats always do. Watching a dog roll around on the lawn will do it. Yeah. Wolves always inspire me. Now you're getting somewhere. Just say cats. tigers. Well, tigers in particular. And tigers and bears. Oh my! Bears. Oh, oh, and bears too. Don't forget them. Yeah, you do. I did. At one point, I wrote a story about a bee. Oh. Yeah. Bees are cute. They are really cute. I like yeah. bee boats. Well, just I the way they move, you know, the way they kind of zip around and stuff. and Because it was actually a short story back in college, or in high school. Yeah. And, um, but at the, through the entire story, I never said that it was a bee. Like, I used very nondescript language about this character that was just, like, racing through this pathway to get out of the village. Um, and like, you know, the language that I use was like, it, it, she like flew over the hurdle or whatever. And at the end, you find out it was actually a bee. I like that. Yeah. Oh, that I do fun. too. I like doing that kind of stuff when I write. I like to have it seem like it's about one thing and then you don't figure out what it actually is until the end. And then it makes sense because then it's more fun. I, I like reading stuff like that because then I like to go back and read it again and go, oh, I get what that was referencing. I get what that was referencing. Yeah. I get what that actually means now. So it's a puzzle within your story. Yeah. <laughs> That's the kind the of stuff mystery. I like. To read. I like it. That reminds Which me is of uh, one of the prompts that I did was writing from the point of view of an inanimate object in a coffee Gift shop. card holder gift card holder i read that one you did read that one but it was really fun because you know you're giving a personality to something that people don't necessarily think about having a personality uh-huh like and i feel like you did that with b like you gave her a story mm -hmm. you gave her something that people could connect to and in our minds we automatically go oh it's a human mm -hmm. and then when somebody's like just kidding it's a gift card holder it's a b like your whole brain yeah. is like what I just felt through a gift card holder. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, like, I think I really like that stuff. But for me, I'm very inspired by large birds. So like eagles, ravens. Okay. Um, Ooh. There's something about them and just watching them interact with each other like mm -hmm. watching them fly so free watching how much personality they actually do have where'd you go lauren i'm still here there you i got are. a phone call <laughs> tell them shut up um but yeah there's something about that 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 always makes me feel peace and it it has a way of bringing creativity when i feel none 
Um, and that's mm. one of the reasons I like to be on the back of a motorcycle is you can look up in the sky and undoubtedly you're going to see some type of bird at some point. Um, and yeah, my cats are my emotional support during my writing, but I wouldn't say that they're as much of an inspiration. Yeah. They're, more, they're like my little cheerleaders. They're muses. Yeah, there you go. My Aww. little muse cats. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. That's actually, Muses, that's sort of another thing that I like to pull creativity from is I like to go into old mythos and, and yeah. pull from that because this was another story that I started writing that I never finished back in high school or whatever, but I was writing about Thanatos. <laughs> that's a dog. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Not Thanatos, the yappy thing in the background <laughs> but i was writing a a story about like you know the the god of death what happens if the god of death meets a human that makes that changes their his world right like i i think at the time i was writing like this love story about like thanatos fell in love with a human so what happens nice because that's not a dynamic that can happen right but I did a bunch of research at the time on the all of the myths surrounding Thanatos and found all the information that I could. Yeah, that's always pull really that fun. in to pull that into the narrative. Did I send you my Gorgon hit record thing? No, I don't think you did. So there was a prompt a few weeks ago, and it was um, the prompt was a Gorgon on the loose. That's my mom's phone vibrating. It's fine. I know. I watched the video. Did it? Did it? She's rotating. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that was that was the only thing was Gorgon on the loose, and they were kind of like, if you don't know what a Gorgon is, Medusa was a Gorgon. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't want to just write about Medusa because that was what they said. So I looked it up and like read about her background and how you know she has sisters and they all got mm -hmm. changed because they wanted entrance and, the, and like there was this whole thing that i did that and then that character i chose uriel and she was in the story for like three sentences mm -hmm. and it was you know it was focused on some detective most of the part and he was it was his point of view um but it was really interesting to go and create this whole like learn this background that was already created and then mm -hmm pull upon that to create my own story like I, it took pressure off of me having to create an entire person yeah like you know I had a dynamic from one character that exists but in some form by somebody else yeah. who created it and then I can create the other character and they can interact and I don't know it was interesting to be able to do that and um, mm -hmm. I feel like I I read a couple of uh, historical fictions recently, mm -hmm. and there's something really interesting in that too, like being so entrenched in something that actually happened, but living it through fictional characters that interact with non-fictional characters. Right. It's a, it's a great world to be in. Yeah. Having done that once. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you did. Your first book. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's like, I feel like for you, Lauren, in particular, that type of writing would help you spike your creativity again and mm -hmm. maybe get that started so that you can find some sort of release through this and I mean even if you're just like mad at work for 20 minutes and want to just I'm gonna write these things um, well plus you get to research so that that does inspire you researching mm -hmm. just learning the whole time history and saying do they did they use a toothbrush in you know 1990 yep. all the weird yeah. little details did they go to the dentist what did they how did they do all these different things it's so different you know like did they have toilet paper all these important questions you don't know what's their sliced bread <laughs> yeah i mean right. really you can't just say that these things because they may not have had it or right. you know, rural areas they may not have had any of these things no oh. And Lauren loves to do her research. I do. It's the, I do too. I enjoy that part. I'm not really happy that I'm researching the Spanish flu right now with what's going on. That's kind of scaring the heck out of me. <laughs> it's like we're following exactly what we did then. This is wonderful. Yeah, we're really we good. We shut down, then we protested, and we opened up, and then it got really bad. Huh. Yep. 
that couldn't, that couldn't happen again, could it? No, not at all. I'll stay inside with the cockroaches. It's fine. <laughs> well, they look through anything, so they might we they have, might have something to teach us. Yeah, yeah, I'll just watch from a distance across the room as it steals the couch. <laughs> Sorry, there are other places to sit, and at least it wasn't in your bed. No, I love. Well, the they room. grow up to be pretty big, where you can actually ride them eventually at some point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. No. So we're all just going to go through the apocalypse and then ride cockroaches around the world. That'll be great. Fun. Yeah. Get well, them little harnesses. and Yeah, you're just getting started <laughs> early, Lauren. You got to you gotta capture it and you got to start training it. No, I want it to go away. <laughs> <laughs> Are we living the Wally movie right now? Yes. Somebody have a flower <laughs> stored away that they can just pull out later? Yep. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, well... That's it. Oh, look, your wooden roses. They're so pretty. They're made of wood. They are made of wood. There's some guy in Sacramento that oh, pretty. makes those. Yep. And then he sells them to people. Yeah. My husband got me those for Mother's Day because I don't like real flowers because they die. <laughs> so he got me these little carved ones instead that are amazing and beautiful. They are. are beautiful. They're like a purple ombra color. They're lovely. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, do you guys have any last words of wisdom? I feel like we came really full circle in a beautiful way. Yeah, this is a good one. It we was. did very good. It's because we're fucking amazing. I think maybe my nap right before recording helped. <laughs> <laughs> did you dream? Did it spike your no, creativity? No, I was out. Good. I was exhausted. I was out cold. Because of cockroaches. <laughs> yeah. Can't sleep well with a cockroach in the house. That's weird. So then I changed houses and got like three hours of solid sleep. That's amazing. I feel like it that's is. more than you do in your normal life. So <laughs> <laughs> just be scared by cockroaches and then die for three hours. All right. What about you, My Denise D.L. Finn? Any words of wisdom? I, I think I've shared all I had in me today. I don't know. Like you got one more, one more wink of wisdom. Do I have one more wink of wisdom in me? Yeah, let's hear it. Sleep more. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> yeah, I doubt it all. <laughs> and I don't even have cockroaches and I'm not sleeping. Yeah, I'm going to blame the quarantine for that. No, I wasn't sleeping before them anyway. It's fine. Yeah, I know. Well, maybe, you know, creative people just don't sleep. Maybe. That's true. The brain doesn't stop. Going. No, it doesn't. See? Mine's always going, and it wants to get really creative about three in the morning. Go, I got yeah. some really good ideas. Wake up, hurry up, sit Three up. in the morning is literally a magic time for things to happen, and I don't yeah. know why. Like, when I yeah. was working overnights, every time it hit 3 a.m., I'd be like, oh, I have to do these things. I should write yeah. this. Like, it's so weird. Like, I want to get up, and it's like, but no, that'll be weird. Then I'll have to explain why I'm up, because then your dad will get up and go, what are you doing? It's like, no, if I explain it, you ruined it. <laughs> so, no. Are you up at 3 a.m.? Because rainbows are tangible. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go paint this room right now. <laughs> uh, I get it. Yeah. So find your 3 a.m. Not at 3 a.m. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's our final takeaway from this. I like it. Yeah. That's well, what nature's for. That's our 3 a.m. Nature is our 3 a.m. There you go. There's her wise words oh. of wisdom. Hey. Hey. Okay. Hey, I had it. Lauren left us again. I there she is. My, there she is. <laughs> just so you know, Lauren's face keeps disappearing for those people that are stuck just listening to us. Well, Which, it'll be fun for Nella to see. It will be. And my dad. And your dad. Okay. And if people really want to look at us, I'll send them a link. Why would they want to do that? Because we're so fucking hilarious. Because everybody's inside and they need friends right now. <laughs> we are their friends. They, now they can look at us. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us, Denise. Thank <sighs> you for having me here today. I had a lot of fun. Damn right. Thanks, Lauren. <laughs> Yay. Bye.